Kenya is in the midst of an engineering crisis. With less than 3,500 certified engineers against the demand of 20,000 engineers, this is presenting a major headache even to policymakers. But the question is this, what do we need to do to address this challenge? This week on Inside Government, our focus is on engineering fraternity here in Kenya. And we are talking to the president of Institution of Engineers of Kenya, Engineer Eric Ohaga. Thank you very much, Engineer, for your time. I mean, look, you've been the president of IEK for less than six months now. Uh, what have you learned so far? Thank you so much, O'Brien. I think um, as the president of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya, I think for the last six months, it's been a very interesting encounter, basically looking at the affairs of the engineers and how best we can participate in ensuring that this country becomes a middle-income economy that ensures quality life for all its citizens. And the engineers are in the center stage of ensuring that that actually happens. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, you've been an engineer since uh, 2006. Uh, that's about uh, 14 years or almost 16 years. And uh, what have you learned that, that can be used to address the challenge of, that is facing um, the engineering fraternity in Kenya? Yeah, I can say for sure engineering fraternity in Kenya is one profession that is under siege. This is one profession that everybody else thinks they can become engineers in this country. And that has gone a long way in making things worse. Uh, as an engineer, people are trained for five years and they are supposed to practice that engineering course after training. And therefore, the engineering fraternity should be left to the engineering professionals so that uh, they are able to undertake the professional activities that pertain to engineering. That is one issue that I've seen over many years that people have continued to erode into the engineering fraternity and that has affected the performance of the practice in this country. Mm -hmm. As the Institution of Engineers of Kenya and of course even the regulator which is responsible for us, are able to interview engineers and then certify them. We have also have a panel of reviewers so that when engineers present their papers, they are able to be through a mentorship program that are then able to undertake the, 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 the examination and then become for purposes of transitioning into professional. But when you see that uh, we have not been having exposure uh, for our engineers, I mean, when you look at the kind of construction that the country has undergone in the last 10 years, you know, from SGR to the port of Mombasa to major highways like the expressway, uh, uh, what, what are the kind of exposure are you talking about? You realize most of these projects have been under the PPP arrangements where the vendor comes with the money and they come with most expertise. And the engineers are not involved right from pre-visibility study into feasibility study, into the design. And these are opportunities for engineers to get exposure because we want engineers to participate in design of these particular projects. We want engineers to participate in the supervision of these particular projects. We also want engineers to participate in the operations and maintenance of these assets once they have been put in place. But now these arrangements where you only realize that our projects have been brought on in Kenya and the participation of these engineers have not happened at all. And therefore there is lack of participation of engineers and exposure for our local engineers in these particular major projects that we have seen happening in this country. Engineers are expensive. Number two, they are underexposed. And number three, undertain and you have now been certified by Engineers Board of Kenya. You are now ready to undertake some of these projects. The only problem is that... Talking about UNESCO and uh, in 2021, that is last year, they came up with a report that was titled Delivering on the Sustainable Development Goals. And the report, you know, was very harsh on uh, the status of um, engineering in Africa, training among African engineers. And of course, the other issue was uh, the number of certified and qualified engineers vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the population. And so this goes on to cement, uh, uh, you know, the notion that a lot of people have about the qualification of our engineers. It has affected the performance of the practice in this country. Mm -hmm. Yes. How did we get there? I think I could say, first of all, is uh, because of uh, civic education. 
It's not, uh, we have not done much specific, civic education in our day-to-day -day life and therefore many people in this country do not appreciate the presence of an engineer in their infrastructure project and this could uh, be addressed uh, by IEK and EBK because we have, a, we have formed certain uh, committees like the publicity and advocacy committee that is going to ensure that the role of an engineer defying or rather registering the engineers in this country According to the UN body, which is UNESCO, requires that uh, for every one engineer, there should be 2,000 people, Kenyan people. But as it stands right now, we are, one engineer is serving about 13,000. As we speak right now, we require to have about 20,000 engineers in this country for us to be able to effectively supervise the projects and effectively implement the engineering projects in this country to achieve the middle income economy that we are looking at. And there are several interventions that we have put in place. First of all, as uh, the engineer's uh, regulator, which is EBK, initially we used to have very few number of interviewers who are responsible for certifying the engineering uh, fraternity in this country. Over the last two years, that number has been increased. Now we are over 50 panelists that received well in advance and then presented for the interview panels. IEK has also uh, formed a mentorship uh, board this mentorship board is actually ensuring that all the graduate engineers in this country, which we have about 19,000 graduate engineers, are able to be taken professional engineers. What we have also realized over the a few a couple of years is failure or lack of uh, meaningful projects, infrastructural projects, where our graduate engineers can participate to gain that relevant experience that is required for purposes of registration. So we've had very few uh, projects and therefore our graduate engineers are not able to be exposed. Mm -hmm. There has always this um, notion in many people's mind that uh, number one, locally they lack relevant experience. How far from the truth is this? Farthest from the truth. Uh, we, this country has um, very qualified institutions of high, high learning where engineers are trained for a period of five years. After training for five years, you then join the job market where you undertake uh, on-the-job training to, under, to, to, to acquire the relevant experience. Once you have the exposure and availability of these projects for the engineers to undertake has been the problem. But we have qualified professional and consulting engineers in this country who are willing and they have been participating in some of these projects in this country, including major roads that you have seen being constructed in this country, major energy infrastructure uh, projects that have happened in this country have been performed by the local engineers. Mm -hmm. So in terms of exposure, in terms of talent, in terms of professionalism, we have that content in this country. We only require to be given an opportunity to partake of these uh, projects in the country. And one of the issues they raised was that uh, there is low standard of... Our qualifications in this country is very top-notch. And uh, for your information, Kenya as a country, and of course a member of even African Federation of African Organization, is working very hard to accede to the Washington Accord. And this one Shinato code is about standards of engineering, where an engineer in Kenya, trained engineer, can work all over the country, all over the globe. And that means you will have attained the requisite standards that we are talking about in terms of delivery of an engineering project. And therefore, in terms of quality of engineering uh, in this country, I must attest that out of the accredited universities in this country, they are able to offer quality engineers and once we accede to this Washington Accord, which we are looking forward to 20, 2023, then we shall be flying next all over. Year. Next year. We shall be flying all over with our expertise uh, to work in all over the world uh, because they will have recognized the kind of quality of uh, engineering practice we have in this country. Yes. Another crisis that is facing uh, the local engineering fraternity is the issue of brain drain, whereby, you know, as a country will spend a significant amount of resources to train our engineers before they even contribute to the economic well-being of this country, they move to other countries, especially in Europe and in the US. How can we address this challenge? I think this one can be addressed in two folds. First of all is from the university. We know there's a drain drain that happens from our lecturers in the university. We have a problem there also. Yes. One is because of low remuneration. They are not able to take care of the lecturers in those universities and therefore they tend to leave this country for better pastures in other countries. Also engineers now after graduating, 
There's also low uh, employment in many infrastructure institutions, and therefore the majority of those who have graduated, you know we are graduating about 1,500 per single year, but that is not commensurate with the rate at which they are getting employed. Mm -hmm. So some of them find opportunities in other countries where they are well paid. Some of them who have gone for further studies like in masters, and they are, they, are, they are lucky to get opportunities in those countries. They are not willing to come back in this country because of low remuneration of engineers. Uh, I mean, there is no way that, uh, you know, Kenya will be in a position to remunerate an engineer the same way, for example, a European country would do uh, Germany, UK, Switzerland, all these countries. So, so how do you deal with that? We want to grow this country to a middle-income economy by the year 2030. Who are going to be responsible for growing this economy? Once we grow our GDP, then the economy grows and the country should be able to afford that particular payment. And who are going to ensure that this happens are the engineers. If you look at the Singapore, it is the engineer who brought that country to that particular status. And therefore, if you want to get to that particular status of talking about middle income economy, then you go to invest in an engineer in this country, and then you'll be able to pay and any other profession in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're also talking about, uh, you know, uh, the, the age, the average age of a university lecturer, engineer, you know, lecturer, is about uh, uh, 55 to 65 years. Uh, how also do you deal with this? I think this is all about succession planning and being able to attract that talent back to the university after graduation. Of course, we have very many people who do very well in the university and they would like to come back and teach so that there is that succession planning once they retire. But that has not been the case uh, in many of our universities. Once they leave, they are not motivated to go back and train. And therefore, you realize those who have been there continue to be there. They continue to become adjunct professors. And therefore, there's no that um, deliberate effort to ensure that the young people can be able to go back to the university as tutorial fellows and uh, make sure that they contribute towards the development of the engineering uh, students in this country. When you look at the number of graduate engineers that we have in this country, it's almost 20,000. You're talking about 19,000 19, graduate engineers. Vis-a-vis -vis the number of certified engineers, less than 3,500. So where is the disconnection here? As you have said, that is one thing that gives us sleepless nights at the Institution of Engineers of Kenya and of course even at the Engineers Board of Kenya. The chairman of the Engineers Board of Kenya is very passionate about trying to reverse this particular trend. And we have a lot of uh, interventions that we have put in place. One of it is the Graduate Engineers Internship Project that is being undertaken by uh, the Engineers Board of Kenya where a number of graduate engineers have been taken through a two-year training course after which they can then transition to become professional engineers. As Institution of Engineers of Kenya, we're also making very strategic partnership with infrastructural institutions where they employ several engineers so that we can have agency-based training for engineers in those particular institutions so that then the numbers can be uh, exponentially increased. We're also asking these institutions to make a provision specifically for internship of other graduate engineers who are not employed within those institutions so that these numbers can then be enhanced for purposes of meeting that particular target which we are looking forward to increase uh, four times in the next uh, five years. Does the Kenyan market has a uh the, absor the, the absorption capacity uh, to, in, to absorb all the engineers that are out there? Sure. Once the economy grows, uh, there's an opportunity for those engineers. Every single day when you wake up from your house to go to work, all those things that you use are engineering in nature. And therefore, I always believe that we will never miss an opportunity to do our, our practice in all, in all aspects. And once the engineers are there and they, they expand the economy in, manufacture, in manufacturing, in the housing industry, you heard we want to do 250,000 housing, uh, housing units. Those are opportunities for engineers to grow in. We talk about agriculture. It is the engineers, agricultural engineers, driving that particular agenda. So when you look at the whole scope of the economic uh, uh, spectrum, there are opportunities to absorb the engineers that are coming out of our uh, institutions. We just require goodwill and facilitations of the engineers as they graduate from the institutions uh, into the job market. Mm -hmm. Yes. The government is talking big about um, housing. 
And uh, during his uh, swearing in, uh, President William Ruto talked about you know, the construction of 250,000 housing units uh, every year. This, of course, requires a significant number of engineers. Do you believe the numbers that we have of engineers in this country uh, can manage to meet this workload? I'm pretty sure with, we are heading to 4,000 registered engineers with 19,000 graduate engineers. So with these 4,000 professional engineers and with graduate engineers working under them, they will be able to undertake these projects adequately in this country. And then once the engineers, the graduate engineers, again, the requisite experience on these particular projects, they can then go on their own and be able to manage uh, the other projects and also train others in, in, uh, in the course of doing their duties. When you look at the Engineers Board of Kenya, they talk about uh, increasing the number of certified engineers in Kenya to about 20,000 uh, by about the year 2025. Right now, we are not even 4,000. Uh, do you think this number is going to be met? Just a point of correction. Uh, the target is to increase to 10,000 by the oh, year sorry, 20, 10, 2025. And that is very possible. Actually, as a board, I'm a member of that board. And we are doing everything possible to ensure that that happens. If you look at our targets, uh, 500, but they are going to be increased exponentially. It's not going to be a direct proportionality in the next few years. We expect that we go to 700, then we go to 2,800, then we'll be hitting 5,000, and then we get to uh, 10,000. But this intervention that we put in place in terms of ensuring that we have enough projects that will be able to offer internship, and we also scale up this internship graduate internship program and also increase the strategic relationship between ourselves and the industry so that they can open up opportunities for graduate engineers to be able to partake of these projects. Uh, within a period of 24 months, we should be able to have an uh, avalanche of engineers uh, becoming professional and then we'll be able to meet that 10,000 mark in the next five years. And it is proper to remember that uh, 2025 is less than, is less than uh, two and a half years from where we are now. Uh, and uh, last year, when you look at the numbers of um, engineers that were certified by EBK, you are talking about uh, 351. Uh, so, how do you? What is the plan to upscale this number up to the 10,000 that you are talking about? The number last year was 435 that was certified by EBK. This year, we have a target of doing 700. So you can see we're already multiplying that by factor. In the next year, it will be an exponential factor. It will not be a multiplication of two. So we are looking at getting to 2,500 or 2,800, and then we move in that particular direction. I think all these strategies that we're putting in place will be able to get us there. And we are monitoring every, every single quarter once we get this uh, engineer certified and we take any corrective action whenever there is need to be as we put our eyes focused on 2025 with the 10,000 mark uh, being realized, mm -hmm. yes. When you look at our curriculum, is it competent enough or updated enough to meet today's engineering needs? Yes, uh, within the Engineers Board of Kenya, we have a committee called Academic Qualification Committee, which is responsible for accreditation of some of these programs. And after every five years, we participate in the review of uh, university curriculum. Most of the institutions, most of these high learning institutions actually reach out to EBK and IK for members who are in the industry, professional engineers, to participate in the review of their curriculum so that they are up to date with the current changes in technology uh, so that uh, that happens. So I can confirm uh, we participate in the review of their curriculum so that uh, they are up to date uh, with their teachings. Uh, engineer, the world is moving to um the green concept of construction uh, and of course designing. Uh, when you look at our curriculum and our training, is it tailor-made to meet these needs? Thank you so much, O'Brien. I think uh, that thing on green uh, environment it resonates so well with engineers. And it's all about climate change. And you realize that Kenya is a, is a signatory to the Paris Accord that requires that we keep the temperatures below 1.5. And engineers are going to participate in ensuring that this happens. We are adjusting ourselves in terms of even the, the way we do our designs. 
to ensure that we are climatically resilient in our design. In the road designs, you are seeing we are also uh, uh, promoting the use of mass transport so that then we ensure that the climatical conditions are maintained. In the, in, in the housing industry, we are also looking at all aspects of uh, modifying our design so that we are able to conserve the energies and also everything that goes on in ensuring that the climatical conditions are maintained. So we are alive to this fact and in fact even this year our theme in our conference is going to be uh, climatical mitigation and the role of an engineer in ensuring that we are resilient to our climatical design. So that is one thing that we are really encouraging our engineers that in our design proposals they must be subject to climatical uh, considerations so that uh, we contribute towards the reduction of the greenhouse gases. For well, Alethes here, the Engineers Board of Kenya uh, passed or brought to life uh, the engineers, scales of fees and professional engineering services rule, you know, that was uh, passed in 2021. Uh, as engineers, uh, what do you make of this? The greatest winner in that particular aspect or the passage of that particular law is the Kenyan public because of the safety aspect that is going to be ensured by that scale of fees. It will ensure that the engineers in this country can then participate in quality work that will ensure safety of the Kenyan people. And that is exactly what it's supposed to do. That you can almost predict the cost of your infrastructure without uh, opaqueness. And that is what we are looking at it uh, in that particular regard. It's just setting the minimum fee that an engineer should be able to, uh, to charge. And therefore, you don't look at the financials. That means you spend your time in giving quality designs. You give, spend your time in giving quality supervision. You also spend your time in giving quality uh, operations and maintenance of the assets that will have been designed by the engineer. Mm -hmm. And I know the Competitions Authority of Kenya had an issue with this, saying that uh, this is akin to price fixing. Uh, uh, have you managed to address this as an, as an industry? Uh, I think uh, it was not a price fixing at all because this is just a professional guiding the professional fees and it happens in all other professions. These uh, engineers in no exception. When you look at the lawyers, they have their own scale of fees that is, is, is stipulated in their advocate's fees. If you look at the doctors, they have their own scale of fees and therefore engineers were not, were not acting out of the ordinary. We are just ensuring that we want to protect the professions, we want to protect the public so that the quality can be assured as they undertake their professional work. So that, that issue has been addressed with uh, CAK? That was ultimately addressed by CAK and that's why the law was passed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even as you settle down as uh, the president of uh, uh, IEK, uh, what kind of, uh, of an industry that do you want to see five years from now? We want to see a very vibrant uh, industry uh, and engineers playing their rightful role in this industry. That's exactly what we are asking, even the, the current government. Let the engineers practice what they have been trained to practice. Let's give the engineers an opportunity to do that in infrastructural institutions that are being led by, are supposed to be led by engineers. Let's have those engineers leading those particular infrastructural issues so that we can va have value for money in those particular institutions. And in the next few years, we shall see a boomerang in terms of development in this country mm -hmm. if we give engineers an opportunity to perform. I, I know as an industry you've been lobbying uh, the government to increase um, or to set aside 0.05 percent of all the infrastructure budget to go towards um, the training of engineers. Have you succeeded in this attempt? This is a work in progress and we are doing it with all institutions, government institutions. And that is one aspect, that is one intervention that we want to see enhancing the level of certification of our graduate engineers. And you can imagine if that were to happen in all the Kenyan projects that are going on, then we should be able to achieve our target of getting 10,000 registered engineers by the year 2025. Uh, are, you, are you engaging with the new administration to see this is um, activated? We have made every effort to engage the new administration 
uh, from the county government. Uh, we ha we'll be having a discussion with the county government of uh, Nairobi, Honorable Sakaja, in the month of uh, uh, October. And we're also seeking an audience with the, the president of this country. And we shall be putting forward our suggestions that can help improve in his agenda, in manifesto, uh, so that we can all work together to achieve what they have in plan for this country. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the counties, um, now that you brought the issue of counties, uh, according to an audit uh, that was carried out by the Ministry of, 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 of Infrastructure, only about 15 counties have hired the services of engineers, despite the fact that they undertake a lot of engineering work. How is this uh, impacting the quality of work being done at the county level? That is a very serious problem uh, and it's, it's all over the 47 counties and that's why we want to actively engage the new leadership as they come on board. This works happen at the county. There are a lot of design work happening at the county, a lot of approvals that are required at the county, a lot of supervision work that are required at the county, but the number of professional engineers is a mega number in those counties and therefore we want to lay it bare to the county leadership that you require this number of engineers to be able to undertake those particular professional works in the county so that we continue to have quality of work we also ensure safety within the county government so we want to engage in the earliest opportunity time uh, during this particular induction process that is going on with the county governments mm -hmm. uh, you know in the interest of time because we come we must come to a close uh, where do you see this industry in the next uh, 10 years? In the next 10 years, when an engineer in this country will be given an opportunity to exercise their role, I'm seeing a very vibrant economy. I'm seeing a developed economy. I'm seeing all flagship projects that we have envisaged in the, in the Vision 2030 coming to fruition, and this country enjoying quality life with the involvement of these engineers who are currently on board. Thank you very much, Engineer, for joining us and, of course, for helping understand the challenges that uh, the engineering industry in Kenya is facing and the way forward. Thank you so very much. Your time much for is highly appreciated. Thank you so very much for having me. Asante sana. Thank you so much. Well, we have been talking to the uh, president of Institution of Engineers of Kenya, Engineer Ohaga, on the challenges that the sector is facing and, of course, the remedial measures and how they are working with the public as well as the private sector to address these challenges. Well, you have been watching Inside the Government. Thank you very much indeed for your time. We do this again on Friday next week. Until then, have a good afternoon.